Mad Pat is a proven liar. Clip. Oh god. How do you guys know about this? That's my question. How do you even know that this exists? Am I like... Like... The first and foremost in... Making fun of Matt Pet clips? Am I just like known as the funny Matt Pet clip roasting guy? I have no- Alright. Let's go. My parents didn't swear or anything like that, so like... What you see on camera, that isn't me like self censor Even when I do like AG double hockey sticks or what, like I don't say hell in my day-to-day yeah, -day really life. you don't swear. I don't. Mm -hmm. WHAT THE FUCK?! Ah! <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. If it isn't Matthew Patrick getting absolutely anally ass blasted. Oh, it feels so good to be king. <laughs> oh, let's watch that again for good measure. Didn't swear or anything like that. So like. What you see on camera, that isn't me like self censor Even when I do like H double hockey sticks or what, like I don't say hell in my yeah, day to day life. Yeah, you really life. don't swear. I don't. Mm -hmm. WHAT THE FUCK?! Ah, ha, 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 ha. This is funny. I approve. God, I keep getting more messages. Ah, ah, I look at Twitter messages once and I have like a million of them. Alright, we're, we're on the Mad Pat rabbit hole. Okay, Mad Pat rabbit hole. We, we've already confirmed the fact that he doesn't swear. I'm down. Let's watch this this theory. God, it's been far too long. All right, let's do it. Mad Pat rabbit hole continues. These 25 Pokemon are dead because of you. Where he talks about different random Pokemon getting extinct or something because of global warming, probably. I don't know, I haven't seen this video, but I imagine it's gonna be extremely informative and not at all clickbait. Let's go! <laughs> Congratulations, you are killing Pokemon in the established- What kind of an intro is that? <laughs> what kind of an intro is that? Canon of the Pokemon series, we, our player character at least, are the reason that at least 25 Pokemon species have gone extinct. That's not even really a theory. It I know, that's, that's pretty, that's, you know, just science. Like, I, I, why are you being so weird? You know that there are fossil Pokemon, right? Like, they're in every single generation. There are, like, two fossil Pokemon released. Those are literally Pokemon that are extinct. This game theory is cringe already. It's established within the canon. To be fair, it's buried way down in there. It's not buried anywhere! The Aerodactyl and Kabutops and Omastar are all extinct Pokemon. Why <laughs> Why are you like this, bro? Requires you to connect a few dots, but I have 100% confidence that Game Freak has expressly put this in here for observant, dedicated players. And perhaps observant, dedicated players that just play the game normally. Strangest of all, this steamrolling of the wildlife, us bumping innocent animals permanently off the mortal coil, it's- Well, it's based in reality also, where humans have been dickheads for generations. Have you heard of the dodo bird? Well, it's extinct now. All because of a message from God, the Pokemon God, Arceus. He gives us this divine mission to exterminate the Mon. If you thought Pokemon lore was weird before, <laughs> <laughs> Just wait until you hear this one. All right, I'm ready. Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory. I feel like this is, where you show that's this is where you should have started the video. Not gonna lie. Nerdy enough to remind you that Ho-Oh isn't just a Pokemon. It's also the... What Santa Claus says when he molests children. Chemical formula for hydrogen peroxide. Oh, I like my idea. Died. Drop that knowledge bomb the next time you're in Mrs. Nagy's third period chemistry class. Ladies and gentlemen, there are three things that are... That is insanely cringe. ...certain in this world. Death, taxes, and new Pokemon games. We just had a Pokemon Presents last week. We're rapidly approaching the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Even Pokemon Go is making itself a bit of a resurgence. In short, Pokemania is in... Pokemon Go has been alive and well for a long time. I, I feel like you're overselling it, Chief. The air. So I figured it was time we took another look at the series. And what better game to talk about than the smash hit of 2022, Pokemon Legends, Legends of Arceus. Arceus. While recent remakes have literally just been recycling the Pokemon formula that's been reused since the mid-90s, Legends Arceus threw that formula out into the trubbish. It's the first game in the core series to give players an open world to explore. But while it certainly was a new look, it wasn't a new world. In this game, you're actually- Oh my god, it wasn't a new world! You're running through an ancient version of Sinnoh, the region from Gen 4's Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. How far back in the past are we talking? Unfortunately, the game doesn't explicitly tell us, but based on the somewhat modern amenities of Jubilife Village, like binded books, brimmed hats, and steam-powered Pokeballs, as well as the architectural inspiration for the- <laughs> Well, Pokeball science is clearly showing that we live in the medieval times. Galaxy Hall? The Remember back in the medieval times when they used 
Pokeballs. Game seems to take place in the Meiji era of Japanese history, which took place from around 1868 to 1912. No way! Pokemon Legends of Arceus takes place 200 years in the past. And given the houses and clothing in Jubilee Village seem to resemble Dog. that of the Edo era, the era prior to Meiji, more likely to be closer to that 140 years ago. What? That's it? I thought it was so much further in the past. You're gonna just, you're gonna say because of bound books? You're gonna put them at this time period? Bound books? Bro, this is an L. So really, an this L. thing was one part Pokemon game and one part history lesson for that fictional region. It's basically and while it's Dark certainly Souls. fun picking up on all the similarities from two games set in the same region from two different- Can we talk about how Tumblr made God extinct? You wanna, you wanna talk about that? How Tumblr killed Arceus? Time periods, like map locations, logo artwork, and ancestral connections between NPCs, what really tickled my theorist senses were the differences between the two regions that seem to have happened in that 140 year gap. There are some obvious ones, like the region's name being changed from Hisui to Sinnoh, and isolated camps evolving into urbanized cities, but clearly I'm not here to talk about my love of geography or urban planning. I'm here to talk about the biggest difference. Dude, it's like, I, it's unbelievable. You know how like, very often you see YouTubers and you just relate to them? It's like, you got these big YouTubers, like, I don't know, Moist Critical or whatever, he collects Yu-Gi-Oh cards and is like, yo, this is so cool, I relate to this guy, he's cool, he likes a thing that I like, I like. Matt Pet is like the anti-relatable character. Clearly, I'm not here to talk about my love of geography or urban planning. Every everyone collectively watching is like, oh my god, I also love urban planning. I'm here to talk about the biggest <laughs> difference of them all, the Pokemon. There are a good number of Pokemon that we find in the history. Dude, I feel like the last 2 minutes and 53 seconds of the video don't have anything to do with the video. We region that are completely new. Ones that don't make an appearance in the Gen 4 games, their remakes, or any other core installment in the series. Alright, this is how I would have started the video. In Pokemon Legends of Arceus, which takes place a few hundred years in the past, there are different Pokemon. What happened to those Pokemon today? Stay tuned for the next 13 minutes of the video. That's how I would have done the first three minutes in like four seconds. Doing a quick comparison of the Hisui and Sinnoh Dexes shows us that there's a whopping 25 Pokemon that are found somewhere in the Hisui region that are completely absent from other titles. Pokemon like the adorable Hisui and Growlithe and the hauntingly new evolution. Well, that's just because he's blind. He's, he's just, he went, uh, he's extinct because he just ran into things. ...of Basculin, Basculegion. But why? Where'd they go? We've been in this region. That's because people realize that since Magikarp is in every game, it's always better to train Magikarp and make Gyarados than to train Basculin. Before. Basculin is a sucky Pokemon. We've seen everything there is to see here, and yet, in the 140 year history between this game and Gen 4, 25 Pokemon apparently got wiped out. Unsurprisingly, the game never explicitly says what happened to all these Pokemon. Based on my findings, it's for- Really? Really? Are you that surprised it didn't talk about the fact that Basculegion is a delicacy and people ate it? And then they ate it to extinction. Yet you really think that the that Pokemon, the game for six year olds and up, uh, didn't actually talk about how humans hunted them to extinction because they were tasty? For a good reason. You see, they're shielding us from the truth. We killed them. We are responsible. We're the reason those 25 Pokemon variants are gone now. We you mean like how most extinction cases happen? You mean like the reason why almost all animals are extinct? Like elephant birds and white rhinos and all that. It, it's because of humans, we know. We made them go. This is literally a franchise about taking animals and having them fight each other to the death and you're surprised that humans are killing them? Extinct. So come with me, loyal theorists, as we go big lore hunting yeah. to figure out what exactly happened to all these new old Pokemon. But before we set off on adventure, we- Oh, before we set off on adventure. We've been waiting to set up for adventure for the last four minutes! Have to be equipped like a Pokemon trainer. Have you ever stopped to think about how much stuff a trainer actually needs to carry around? Rare stone- Yes, I have thought about that. It's something that everyone's been making fun of about Pokemon and every single other RPG for the last 20 years. Bones, candies, antidotes, whatever the heck a TM is, and that is where our newest line of fury wear comes in. That's right! Merch! We're skipping it, baby! We're skipping it! The it's less you can a long up, one, the baby! It didn't Looking stop! At one of the first Dude, that was a three minute ad. ...new Pokemon that we get to see in the game. Wordeer, the long-awaited evolution for the Pokemon Stantler. Long-awaited, everyone wanted Stantler to evolve, that's for sure. Now in Legends Arceus, Stantlers are plentiful. You practically trip over these guys. But in Sinnoh, not so much. They can only be obtained on one specific route using the Poke Radar. And as for Wordeer, they don't exist. Like, not at all. For a Stantler to become a Wordeer, it needs to use the move Psy Shield Bash a total of 20 times. But Psy Shield Bash isn't a move that 
that Stantlers can learn in games set in the future. So oh not only has the overall God. number of Stantlers shrunk, but it's also lost the ability to use a move that's critical for its evolution. Can I just also say that that's a really cool concept that Pokemon made, how to evolve them. That's really cool. ...into wordier. That's weird, right? So inevitably, I have to ask the question, why? Clearly, the game designers consciously made this decision, so what are they trying to tell us? What reason would Stantlers have to forget an entire move? Well, wordier's Pokedex entry actually gives us a hint. The black orbs shine. <laughs> I guess I can't use my normal Pokedex voice since this game doesn't have an electronic Pokedex. Gotta go with the old-fashioned method. The black orbs shine with an uncanny oh, light when Lord. the Pokemon is erecting invisible uh. barriers. The fur shed from its beard retains heat well and is highly useful material for winter clothing. Useful in cold weather, huh? Sure. So yeah, so the humans killed them to make clothes. Sounds like something. This is like that the citizens of the cold yeah. Hisui region would find pretty valuable. Once people read that Pokedex entry, it's likely they're going to be tempted to try and get their hands on word here to obtain that precious fur. Okay, you know, you can make a whole theory about the Pokedex didn't exist until, uh, until Professor Oak. Okay, so how is there a Pokedex in... 200 years ago. Especially as they continue expanding into areas like the icy north. So, it would seem like Wordier were hunted to extinction for their fur, while the remaining Stantlers did their best to avoid evolving, choosing to flee rather than fight, much like real life deer are known to do. For the Stantlers, evolving just wasn't worth the added stat increase if it made it harder to survive. After generations and generations of Stantlers- They forgot how to learn the move because that's their actual natural evolutionary line to not get hunted to extinction. That was their survival instinct avoiding fights with humans, and especially avoiding the use of Psy Shield Bash out of a fear of evolving, they would eventually forget how to use the move entirely in order to help their chances of survival. No Psy Shield Bash means no evolving means no Wordier. And they aren't the only species that was basically bullied into extinction either. Take the Hisu- Take the, uh, um, uh, mm, uh, the white rhinoceros, for example. <laughs> in Quillfish, a regional variant that's been totally wiped out from Sinnoh by the time Gen 4 rolls around. Thank god, I hated Quillfish. Looking at its Pokedex entry, though, immediately you start to see why this guy might have been on the chopping block. It tells us- Let's say, let, let's see. It tastes amazing. Hmm. That Fishers detested this troublesome Pokemon Dude, because it sucks. sprays poison from its spines, getting it everywhere. A different form of Quillfish lives in other regions. If you look at the Cobalt Coastline, one of the main locations for Hisui and Quillfish, we see that in the intervening 140 years, this actually becomes Gen 4's Route 223, a prime fishing location thanks to the Sunny Shore Market and a swimming location on the way to Victory Road. Oh. What this tells us is that fishermen, fed up with the poisonous quillfish, hunted them to extinction so the coastline could be better used for commercial and recreational purposes. They eliminated what they saw as a problematic fish, which directly leads to what we see in Sinnoh years later. And it's not like it would be hard oh for them to do either, considering God. the Diamond and Pearl Pokedex entries call the quillfish a poor swimmer. There's also a second reason that fishermen might have wanted to get their hands on the quillfish, but this one isn't as directly called out. Food. We've talked over on food <sighs> theory about eating Pokemon, this but so quillfish sad. are likely to be a delicacy in this, this universe. Is so, I, this is what I've been saying the whole time. Humans, I'm, 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 this game theory is like a non-theory. It's like a doesn't need to exist theory. So there's a type of real world puff. By the way, for the record, I get fake angry at MatPet for this stuff because it's funny. Okay, I don't actually hate the guy for making these videos. I feel like it's important to say. For fish called Fugu. It contains a super deadly neurotoxin. Super deadly neurotoxin in the fish that they take extremely special chef people to cut out precisely, and if you're wrong, you die. Just like our good old poisoned type Hisui and quillfish. Yeah. And it too is a delicacy in many parts of Japan. Like Japan. Only being served yeah. by specially trained chefs who know how to prepare the meat without killing their customers. Yeah. Hisui and quillfish we would know. Work in the same way. <laughs> Regardless, know, though, whether it was to clear bro. a nuisance or fill the restaurants, humans were the ones that that wiped these guys out. Humans the wiped these guys Hisui. Speaking of being hunted, let's look at two more examples of hunted Pokemon. Hisui and Voltorbs and Electrodes. Looking at them, it's immediately clear that these two have had some of the most dramatic changes in their design. <laughs> these guys just hunted themselves to extinction. They just blow themselves up. Fine. The Kanto versions of these Pokemon are made of some sort of metal-like compound. Well, the Hisui and Electrodes Pokedex entry says that the body is made of a, quote, material curiously similar to Apricorn wood. Now, this is an important detail because historically, Apricorns were used to make Pokeballs. In Legends Arceus, Apricorn are everywhere. But in Sinnoh, there's Humans no more of these the trees to be found. To use so their remains for Pokeballs. What happened? Well, by the end of Legends Arceus... All right, we're skipping a little bit, because I don't need... This it takes him so long to explain everything. It's suffering. ...directly mirrors the animal behavior that we see in real... 
coached by the would-be Kurtz of the world. And this directly mirrors the animal behavior that we see in real life. Many elephants are slaughtered specifically for their tusks, right? Well, this has historically been happening so much that elephants in heavily hunted areas are now starting to evolve to have smaller tusks, or even no tusks at all. Since poachers are hunting them for yeah. those tusks, elephants with no tusks have an evolutionary advantage, thereby passing that trait along. Just like a metal- Why is he explaining something we already know, though? Chat. That's half of his videos. Okay. Like, come down. Metal Voltorb and Electrode would have a survival advantage over their wood variants. But it wasn't just overhunting that was a problem in that 140 year period. It was also an overuse of the region's resources. Ursa Luna and Cleaver are two new evolutions of Ursa Ring and Scyther that we see in Legends Arceus that require the use of a specific item to evolve. Ursa Ring needs the Peat Block, and Scyther needs the Black Augurite. And while Ursa Ring and Scyther are certainly easy to obtain in the Gen 4 games, their evolutions aren't present because neither of these items exist anymore. Which we can explain by looking at the differences between Hisui and Sinnoh. The peat block item is based on the real life material known as, well, peat. Basically, it's like a precursor to coal. It takes thousands of years to form and it can be burned for fuel. Based on the cities yeah. that we see in Gen 4, it's clear that there was an increase in industrialization in the Sinnoh region. Industrialization means machines and machines need fuel. And hey, look, here's and a readily use up available all the material peat that's the just not here with there, no other so can't evolve purpose. anymore. Might as well use it until it's gone. Black yeah. Augurite actually suffers a similar fate. The name is Obsidian. Obsidian's a material that's made from the rapid cooling of lava, and it's been used for centuries as a sharp material for tools. The only active volcano that we see in the Hisui region is this one off the Kobo- Can we talk about how the fact that this Psyduck is as big as this entire island? I think that we can make an entire video talking about how these Pokemon are not to scale, or are they? coastland, which, based on its shape, is what they call a cinder cone volcano. Cinder cone volcanoes don't tend to make obsidian. The only other place it could have come from is Mount Coronet, which the box art does seem to imply is a volcano, but it appears to have been dormant for years. Therefore, it's safe to say that black augurite is going to be in limited supply. It, along and with And therefore, Pete, we're out of it, so that we got them evolves. We're skipping them. We're skipping- Those islands. What he saw was that each finch evolved a complete- cats are smaller, that means that the organisms that live there need to become more specialized. For example, take the famous finches studied by Charles Darwin on the Galapagos Look Islands. What he finch. saw was that each finch evolved a completely unique beak shape based on the island that it lived on. This comes with the benefit of making you really well suited to your environment, but the downside is that if anything changes, then your specialized traits won't do you any good. And that's exactly what happened with these Hisui Pokemon. As humans expand- Yo Derp, thank you so much for the five gifted subs. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. ...into their reach into the area as they industrialized. The climate of Hisui became warmer. This uptick in human development, the deforestation that came with it, all of it led to a shift in biodiversity of the region, meaning some of these Pokemon were no longer able to make the cuts. Now, these are only a few examples of what happened to these region-specific Pokemon, but you can see the pattern, right? All these Pokemon are gone thanks to one specific factor. Humans. Humans plundering resources. Humans overhunting. Humans overexpanding. In the yeah, 140 man. years between Legends Arceus and Gen 4, humans have completely morphed the landscape of the Sinnoh region, and the game designers have clearly thought through that history. They Obviously, that's what happened! That, that's how all the animals get extinct unless it involves, like, ice ages and freaking meteors! The animals get extinct because the humans hunt them to extinction or use their things for freaking shiz! Obviously, it has to do with humans! No matter how vague it is that they build buildings and then they ruin the air and then the ozone layer collapses and then birds start dying. That's also humans' fault. The animals aren't going to start destroying the ozone layer. It's the human- oh, Surprise! didn't just insert designs and evolutions into this world arbitrarily. The whole uh, thing was thoughtful, intentional. It was told to us pen. through hints in the Pokedex. Pen. In the end, we get ourselves a game that has a really strong environmental message if we just bother to piece together the breadcrumbs that they left behind for us. A really powerful environmental message, guys. Pokemon Legends of Arceus, you know what it's teaching you? You can change the environment all you want, and you will have absolutely no repercussions for the animals you destroy. That's the lesson here. Except Thanks, there's still Matt one Pat. piece that I haven't connected. One Dream. piece? The one piece is real! Come on, Matt Pat. Why don't you make a video of the one piece is real? Show us some white beard penis. Game, we learned that the people of Hisui are afraid of Pokemon. Some even worship them. The little village that you start off in isn't able to expand more because they're afraid to face the monsters that lurk out in the wilderness. But someone changes that, and in so doing, signs Hisui's death warrant. Oh that person God. is you. At the start of the game, your character is called back in time by the god Pokemon Arceus. When you land, you're immediately tasked with catching Pokemon, something that other people are afraid to do. But you? 
you know better. You come from the future, so you persist. You teach people that Pokemon can be your friends, that they can be used to help with chores. You can even collect them and use them for competitive sports. You Without can even destroy them and have them murder each other while you watch for entertainment. You see, you're the good guy here. Fear of Pokemon, the human race is now able to expand throughout Hisui. Thanks to you, they're no longer afraid to hunt word here for their fur, to exterminate pests like the quillfish, or to use up the land's natural resources. If you had decided to not be a hero, to not save the day, the region would have remained too inhospitable for civilization to truly grow, and grow. humans would have chosen to avoid it entirely. Kinda makes you wonder if that god Pokemon who sent us back in time was so benevolent after all. But well, hey, well, well, here, maybe it was God's fault that animals are going extinct. I really have no idea what the point of this video is supposed to be, and it's wonderful how it makes no sense at all. Thank you all so much for watching. This is not meant as hate towards Mad Pet. I merely want to point out for just one moment, for just one brief moment, one quick, small moment, that Matt Pat is a proven liar. Yeah, that's right. I will die on this My hill. My parents didn't swear or anything like that. So he doesn't like, swear, guys. What you see on camera, that isn't me like self sense Even when I do like AG double hockey sticks or what, like I don't say- AG double oh, hockey sticks. He doesn't AG actually AG say hell, guys. No, he wouldn't. I don't. Ever. What the fuck? Thank My you, Matt did. Pat. We love you. Have a wonderful evening. Remember to stay weird, fam. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.